The experiment in which the first uh, self-sustaining chain reaction was obtained had been preceded by a great number of other experiments, which had made the virtually certain that once the so-called critical dimensions were achieved, the reaction would become a reality. In the 1940s, on the corner of 57th Street and Ellis, stood Stag Field, a stadium that could house up to 55,000 spectators. These were the days when the monsters of the Midway were the University of Chicago Maroons, not the Chicago Bears. And under the West Stands stood the site of an experiment that would change the world. This was the place where Enrico Fermi and his collaborators were working on the first self-sustained, controllable nuclear chain reaction. December the 2nd, uh, the night before, Fermi had told Herb to uh, close up, lock up, and he'd start the next morning. And he evidently knew how close we were to criticality. Fermi, I guess, was actually plotting the reciprocal, and he could tell when it crossed the abscissa, the thing was gonna go critical. The counting kept, rate kept going up and up, and then finally, just before lunch, he said, okay, uh, George, let's go to lunch, which, which sort of amazed everybody. You, you would have thought he would continue through the lunch hour, and so we all put the control rod all the way back in, we closed up and went over to the commons, which is where we always ate lunch together. Came back after lunch, had George pull out the control rod to where it had been. It wasn't much longer, he pulled out a couple of more centimeters and I was very antsy, because boy, this, that counter was just going, it, it just clogged, it wouldn't count that fast. Finally, Fermi, to most everybody's relief, I guess you'd say, said, okay, zip in. I don't know where that term ever came. And George put the uh, control rod all the way back in and everybody cheered. The whole gallery was filled with people. Well, first there was clapping from the balcony where Fermi was, which signified that it was going to go critical. And we were called over to shut down the pile and we joined the whole group. And nobody said anything, which I thought was a fairly remarkable thing. There was no uh, big hullabaloo. This was a truly momentous occasion, and it was quiet. And all I've been able to uh, kind of come up with, it was because everybody knew that it was momentous. And what's there to say? As we look back at the site where Stag Field stood, we have a remembrance in terms of the Henry Moore sculpture, which looks a bit like mushroom cloud or a human skull. Enrico Fermi's vision of peaceful uses for nuclear energy were expressed in the founding of Argonne National Laboratory in 1946, where it was seen that the confines of the city of Chicago were not the appropriate place to build experimental nuclear reactors. It has been in science a tradition that has led to the unprecedented flourishing of this human activity to communicate freely among scientists all over the world. Scientific thinking and invention <coughs> flourish best where people are allowed to communicate as much as possible unhampered. <laughs>